a lot of people who have solar believe that if you want to make money from your solar system, you have to export as much as you possibly can. Now, with the possibility that export rates are going to come down in 2026, I want to set myself a challenge. My plan is to self-consume as much of my solar as I can, but still export just enough to have a negative energy bill for 2026. My target outcome should return a profit of about £365 for the whole year. Okay, why self-consumption? Well, as I've said in many previous videos, we're already starting to see changes from companies like Eon and EDF in the fact that they're reducing their export rates because they don't need all of the excess energy that the vast number of us who have solar are exporting during the summer months. So my old mindset was always export as much as I possibly can, minimize on-site usage for the maximum profit. But I think that's now outdated. When you have electric vehicles, heat pumps, smart tariffs and batteries, there could be a better way. There could be a way where you can have less impact on the grid, but also make more money. So the key question really is, is how do you use your solar intelligently? To use as much as you possibly can to minimize your grid impact, but also export cleverly to make the maximum amount of profit. Now, the big question then is, what if export tariffs change? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, and I can't tell you what is going to happen. Based on uh, the webinar that Octopus did a few weeks ago, where they said they're not looking right now to change the export tariffs, I'm going to make the assumption that nothing is going to change. Now, it's probably a wrong assumption, but for the purposes of this exercise, we're going to look at it as if export tariffs stay as they are. So I started thinking about this a few weeks ago and looking at tariffs like Octopus Flux, I started to realize that there was a way to make the same or even more money from export, but just exporting when the grid needs it the most. So I started working through all of my numbers, all of the consumption, how much did each individual device or collection of devices in the house use? How much did we put into our cars? How much did we charge the batteries? And I put it all into one big spreadsheet. And I came up with a plan that said, for my personal use, I'd probably be better off on Octopus's flux tariff between March and October. So January, February, we'd stay on Intelligent Octopus Go. On the 1st of March, we'd change to Octopus Flux, and then at the end of uh, October, we'd change back to Intelligent Go. Now, as with any hypothesis, you want to test it. So the way I validated this was I used uh, Tim and Kat's uh, amazing tool that they have on their website. If you're not familiar with uh, Tim and Kat's Green Walk, great channel on YouTube. Tim has done an amazing job building a tool which is free to use. Um, Please do buy them a cup of coffee if you use it. But uh, the tool, I put all of my data into it. Um, I'll pop a couple of screenshots up to show you the, the, the tool and, and what it came back with. But it's estimating about £800 in my favour for the whole year. Now, that's not taken into account the fact that I would have to buy some energy for the winter months. So I think around about £400 uh, profit at the end of the year based on using the Octopus Flux tariff when it is, you know, the, the optimum, the time when I can export energy back to the grid. So how does Flux work? Well, Flux is different from most of the other tariffs. Now, just to be clear here, there are two versions of Flux. There is Flux and there is Intelligent Flux. I'm not looking at Intelligent Flux. Intelligent Flux requires you to sort of allow Octopus to control your home batteries. And I'm too much of a control freak to let that happen. But with Flux, you end up with three different rates for the day. And if you're on Flux, you're on Flux outgoing. So that means that you get an export tariff that is also tied to the import tariff. Now you can't be on Flux export and another import tariff, they go hand in hand. So if you change on to Flux, you'll be changing your export tariff to Flux as well. 
The way the way it works is you have a standard day rate of about, it's certainly in my part of the country, of 27 pence. And if you export during the day rate part of the day, you get an export payment of 10.11 pence per kilowatt hour. So almost five pence less than if you were an outgoing octopus. Now, between two o'clock and five o'clock in the morning, you get a slightly reduced import rate of about 16.4 pence, but the export drops to 4.99 pence in the middle of the night. This is to stop people importing energy into batteries, then immediately turning around and exporting it to the grid. But this is where Octopus Flux shines, because between 1600 and 1900 hours, your import rate goes through the roof, it goes to 38 pence, and your export goes up to 29.32 pence per kilowatt hour. So almost double what you would get from uh, exporting on outgoing octopus. So if you have the capability to store energy in batteries all day, all that solar generation, store it all up, and then dump it back to the grid between 1600 and 1900, you'll get paid nearly double what you would on outgoing octopus. Now, in my case, my plan is I'm not going to be importing anything between the 1st of March and the end of October. I plan to run almost exclusively on generated solar. But I'm hoping that I will have enough energy in the batteries that I'll be able to export approximately 20 kilowatt hours a day during that peak period. So how are we going to do this? Well, the way I have my system set up is the house loads. So all of the normal, the plug sockets in the house, here in my office, they will obviously take any uh, solar that is being generated and use that immediately. The same goes for the heat pump. So during the summer months, we generally only use the heat pump for heating hot water. So it doesn't use an awful lot, maybe two to three kilowatt hours a day. So the heat pump will become the second priority. Anything after that will fill up the house batteries. And we want to try and get those batteries as close to full as I possibly can before 1600 hours each day. Now, anything over that, if the house batteries are full, then that will go into our electric vehicles. And the priority to charge them, firstly, is my wife's Nissan Leaf. It has a much smaller battery and she uses it more frequently. And then any remaining will go into my Tesla. Now, just to put it into perspective, during the summer, Last year, on the, the sunniest days, we were able to export between 50 and 60 kilowatt hours a day. Um, on the less sunny days, somewhere in the region of about 40 kilowatt hours a day. So we should be able to fulfill the house loads, the heat pump, the home batteries, and put power into the EVs and be ready to export at 1600 hours when it pays the most. Now, one thing I didn't mention there was my solar hot water diverter. So one of the things you might be thinking is, well, why don't you heat your hot water with your solar hot water diverter? And the reason for that is, is that it has a coefficient of performance of one. You put one kilowatt of energy into it, you get one kilowatt of heat out of it. If we put that same one kilowatt through the heat pump, we'll get four kilowatts of heat out of it. So it doesn't make any sense to use the solar hot water diverter um, unless we're boosting up to about 60 degrees in the tank, maybe for a Legionella cycle. So we'll maybe do that once a month. But for the vast majority of the month, we will not be using the solar hot water diverter to heat our hot water. We'll be using the heat pump. Now, as I said, after we've got the battery full and it's ready to export at four o'clock, all remaining energy will go into the cars. And we've seen, if we look at last year, we still generate enough energy to, uh, to export to our cars up till about 7.30 at night. After that, it drops below the 1.3 kilowatt threshold that the EVs need to, to be able to take that charge. But we should be able to put sufficient energy into my wife's car to fill the battery up. She uses about 10 kilowatt hours a day. And then anything after that will go into, into my car, into the Tesla. And I don't drive an awful lot with that. Um, so again, it will be over a few days. It will more than cover the small amount of miles that I do uh, every single week. But we will prioritize the cars so that her car gets charged first and then my car gets charged second. And this is really easy to do within the My Energy app. We have the two Zappy chargers and you literally just drag whichever one you want to be the priority. So once hers is full, it will automatically go into my car or I can set thresholds. So I can actually say, 
I want her car to charge at 3.6 kilowatts. And if we're suddenly exporting five kilowatts, 3.6 will go to her, and then the remaining 1.4 would go into my car. Makes it really easy, you just set it and forget it. So as I said, our priority is to have those house batteries full by 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So we have about 30 kilowatts of, of solar edge batteries. We have about another 10 kilowatts of EcoFlow batteries. The EcoFlow batteries will more than cover the house load. So they cover the base load, um, one set in the morning and another set in the afternoon, which means those 30 kilowatts of, of solar edge batteries will be sitting there full waiting for 4 p.m. Now, because of where we are in the, in the east of England, we have our north-facing array uh, point, literally pointing at where the sun rises in these sunny mornings in the summer. So we start to see generation around about 5 a.m. And certainly by 9 a.m., we're putting multiple kilowatt hours into our house batteries. So it will be no problem to fill these batteries up uh, and have them ready to go for four o'clock. Then at 4 p.m., we will start a forced export to the grid and I say, the, the aim is to dump at least 20 kilowatt hours per day into the grid in that three hour period. Now, we could dump the whole thing. We could put the whole 29.1 kilowatts into the grid. But again, we want enough left in the batteries to see us through the evening and the nighttime slot. So we don't have to import any power overnight. Um, we want the cars to be full. So I, I think 20 kilowatt hours a day is a good target to, uh, to try and achieve. Now, if we look at what we did in 2025 when we were on outgoing octopus, we were exporting an average of about 30 kilowatt hours a day. Now, that sounds great. 30 kilowatt hours a day at 15 pence per kilowatt hour. That's about £4.50 a day that you're making from export. But remember, we were grid charging our batteries overnight. So not all of that 30 kilowatts that we were giving back to the grid was at 15p. Some of it was at 8p because we Built, brought the energy in to fill the batteries up to allow us to be in a position to export straight away in the morning. So it wasn't quite £4.50, but just to keep the math simple, 50, 30 kilowatts a day at 15p is £4.50 a day. If we can export our 20 kilowatt hours a day at 29.32 pence per kilowatt hour, we'll be making £5.86 a day. And because we're not going to be importing any, any energy from the grid to charge our batteries, that will all be pure profit. So we're going to be exporting less energy, but we're going to be making more money from it. And if all of this works out exactly as I've planned, our net profit for 2026 should be somewhere in the region of about £365. Now, this all sounds great until we get to October. So and again, who knows what next year is going to be like. 2025 was a great year for solar. 2026, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what the weather's going to be like. But if the October is the same as October this year, um, we won't be able to generate enough solar to cover all of our usage in October. So we will actually have a bill in, uh, in October, and we will definitely have a bill in November and December. So... We're looking for the platform to overperform in the summer months to give us that cushion to be able to pay the bills in the in the winter months. So again, we'll be fine for most of the summer, maybe October if we have a particularly bad October. Um, we we may not quite meet re, meet our three hundred and sixty five pounds target. But this is an experiment. Experiments don't always work out. But the ultimate goal here isn't to have a £365 credit, it's to have a £0 bill. So anything over a £0 bill, I will take that as a win. Okay, so for 2025, and we've still got another two weeks of 2025 to run, um, it's looking like we're going to end up with a bill of about minus £100. So Octopus will pay me £100, and I will have a £0 energy bill for the whole year. So for the 2026 plan to to exceed that, we have to we have to end up with a check from Octopus for more than hundred pounds, and that will then show that the self consumption model and the timed export is better than just exporting as much as you can. Will this be successful? Who knows. But if you want to follow along, every single month um, I run a live stream. In that live stream, I will give you 
the monthly update figures, where we are, how we're tracking towards the plan. Um, I also do a live Q&A, so if anybody has any questions, whether they be about this particular experiment or just general solar heat pump type questions, um, I'm more than happy to answer them. So if you haven't joined the live stream, please do give it a go. Um, again, I'll do them usually every second Tuesday of the month. Um, it just depends on, you know, timing and everything else. But I usually give everybody at least a week's notice that when the live stream um, is going live. And we generally, sometimes we have as, as many as about 150 people join the live stream. So it's you're always a lively Q&A. So feel free to join. So this plan goes into effect on the 1st of January. In the 1st of January, we will start measuring. We will... Uh, change tariffs on the 1st of March to Octopus Flux, and then we will change back from Octopus Flux to uh, to Intelligent Octopus Go on the 1st of November. So again, if you want to follow along, join the live streams and we'll see how this experiment runs. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I hope you found this interesting. If you do have questions, do hit me up in the comments below. I'd love to know what you think. What's your prediction? Will I be able to, uh, to increase my profit by self-consuming and not bringing in as any energy from the grid throughout the summer, let me know in the comments below. I just want to say thank you for clicking on this video. I hope you found it interesting. And if I'm lucky, I'll see you back here for another video real soon. Take care.